Why take a look back at the West African Ebola crisis in 2014 in the context of today's coronavirus outbreak? Uh, one reason is that that was the last moment that the global community put in place major reforms to the way that we prepare for and respond to outbreaks. On the positive side, we've had uh, important improvements in the way information is flowing. On an almost hourly basis, we're getting updates from the Chinese authorities and other sources. Scientists are also collaborating with each other much more openly than they were, for example, sharing genomic sequences data, sharing uh, pre-publication versions of their analyses that allows the broader scientific community to track what's really happening. Um, in terms of technology development, we have a new uh, global R&D fund, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, that has already invested in three organizations working to develop a vaccine against the coronavirus. However, on the negative side, trust is at an all-time low, trust in authorities, and this is absolutely essential for responding effectively to outbreaks. In terms of WHO financing, uh, which has been uh, fragile and uh, inadequate since the West African crisis, no systemic reforms have been put in place, and it remains a major weak point for the organization today. Finally, the way in which WHO decides whether an outbreak is a public health emergency of international concern was criticized back in 2014 as being too open to political influence, as well as being too simple or too binary, by which I mean WHO has to say whether we're in an emergency or not in an emergency. And in the complex uh, context that we find ourselves in today, a more graded or nuanced system uh, would probably serve WHO uh, better. I think there have been a number of important reforms put in place since 2014, uh, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. And at the end of the day, the state of global preparedness is really an issue that directly affects each and every one of us.